Hello. My name is Tadashi Sotokawa. This article is Occlusion Consists of the following 23 topics. Each topic is based on the theory of Dawson's functional occlusion. The topic is Occlusal Equilibration Occlusal Equilibration Contents Introduction 1. Introduction Types of Occlusal Equilibration 2. Dawson's Teachings 3. Theory and Technique of Occlusal Equilibration 4. Goals of Occlusal Equilibration 5. Principles of Occlusal Equilibration 6. Significance of the Principle of Occlusal Equilibration 7. Principles of Occlusal Equilibration of Mandibular Anterior Teeth References Introduction Dawson explains the theory and technique of occlusal equilibration in Chapter 33, page 25 of Functional Occlusion. An occlusal equilibration is performed when a patient has been diagnosed with an occlusal disease, i.e., when it is clear that the cause of the disease is malocclusion. In this article, we will explain what occlusal equilibration is based on principle of occlusion with an awareness of the function of the temporomandibular joint. One types of occlusal equilibration, as shown in the upper chart on the right. There are two types of occlusal equilibrations. Occlusal equilibration at the time of prosthetic placement and occlusal equilibration in the treatment of occlusal disease. The occlusal equilibration at the time of prosthetic placement is performed by unilaterally grinding the occlusal surface of the prosthesis to bring it into alignment with the patient's intercuspal position. Since the goal of treatment is the current occlusal state, the technique is relatively simple. Occlusal equilibration in occlusal disease treatment is performed when it is clear that the cause of the disease is malocclusion. In other words, Based on the patient's occlusal analysis, it is determined which teeth and which portion of the teeth should be ground down and to what extent. And the final treatment goal is set before the occlusal equilibration is initiated. Therefore, the occlusal analysis and diagnosis of the patient's occlusion are indispensable for Occlusal Equilibration in Occlusal Disease Treatment In addition, when shaving the occlusal surfaces, one of the occlusal interferences between the upper and lower jaws must be selected for shaving. This makes the technique complex and difficult. On the other hand, Dawson states that crown prosthesis placement should be done as appropriately as occlusal adjustments are done for occlusal disease.
2. Dawson's Teachings At the beginning of Chapter 33 of Functional Occlusion, Dawson indicates the following. Principles 1. Don't equilibrate if the outcome is in doubt. 2. A successful outcome can be determined in advance. Occlusal equilibrations are a less invasive and conservative method of treatment. On the other hand, however, inadvertent occlusal equilibration is a treatment that can lead to a variety of disorders. Therefore, we dentists need to take this short teaching by Dawson to heart. Dawson asserts that doing a poor job of equilibration is far worse than leaving the malocclusion. Dentists should not start occlusal equilibration in the dark with a try it out attitude. Three. Theory and Technique of Occlusal Equilibration Occlusal equilibration is the most widely indicated treatment to resolve occlusal disharmony, and its therapeutic effect is clear and immediate. Patients suffering from occlusal disharmony immediately state that their bite is easier after receiving an appropriate occlusal equilibration based on a proper diagnosis. Occlusal adjustments are based on the principle of occlusal, the functional anatomy of the occlusal surfaces of the teeth. The principle of occlusal is not a new discipline. It began in the late 19th century with the work of Bonwill and Spee and has been developed and refined by dentists and scholars around the world. In this article, I will introduce Dawson's theory and techniques for occlusal adjustment, which is a compilation of occlusal theories. Four. Treatment Goals of Occlusal Adjustment Dawson lists five requirements for occlusal stability. 1. Stable holding contacts on all teeth when the condyles are in centric relation. 2. Anterior guidance in harmony with the envelope of function. 3. Immediate disclusion of all posterior teeth the moment the mandible moves forward of centric relation. 4. Immediate disclusion of all posterior teeth on the non-working side. 5. Non-interference of all posterior teeth on the working side with either the lateral anterior guidance or the border movements of the condyles. Immediate disclusion is ideal if achievable. The dentist identifies malocclusions that interfere with these requirements. Occlusal adjustments are then made with the goal of eliminating those malocclusions. Five. Principles of Occlusal Equilibration In order to eliminate occlusal interference, it is necessary to selectively grind the interfering tooth on either the upper or lower jaw where interference is occurring. The following principles are used to determine which of the upper and lower teeth should be grinded. A. For cusps versus fossae, the fossa is grinded. B. 
For functional versus non-functional cusps, the non-functional cusp is grinded. C. For functional versus functional cusp, the one that does not change the vertical dimension is grinded. D. For incisal versus lingual, the lingual surface is grinded. E. For incisal to incisal, the one that does not affect the aesthetic appearance is grinded. Six. Significance of the principle of occlusal equilibration. By adhering to the principle of grinding the occlusal interferences, as shown in the illustration on the right, the occlusal surfaces of the molars will have a clear cusp and fossa without any change in the vertical dimension. As a result, the intercuspal position is stabilized and the masticatory function of the molars is improved. If the cusp of the molar is grinded without following this principle, the occlusal surface of the molar will be flat. When the occlusal surfaces of the molars become flat, the occlusal surfaces of the upper and lower molars come in contact with each other face to face, resulting in poor masticatory function. In addition, the intercuspal position becomes unstable, and patients complain that they do not know where to bite, which worsens the occlusal disease. Seven. Principles of occlusal equilibration of mandibular anterior teeth. 1. As a rule, the cutting edge of the mandibular anterior teeth is not grinding. The cutting edge of the mandibular anterior teeth is the base of occlusal guidance. As shown in the upper right illustration, grinding the cutting edges of the mandibular anterior teeth can result in loss of contact between the maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth. 2. The incisal sharp edges of the mandibular anterior teeth should be preserved. As shown in the lower right illustrations, if the angle of the labiolingual transition at the mandibular anterior incisor margin is sharply angled due to occlusal wear, the angle should not be shaved to make it transitional. This sharp angle serves an effective function in cutting food. 3. you very much. Occlusal equilibration is now complete. If you have any questions or doubts, Please leave them in the comment section. The next topic will be Examinations and Diagnosis of Occlusal Equilibrations